Hi there, my name is Kay Moon and I'm a Twin Soul Channel and Western Astrologer. And this is a video about the Aries full moon of 2021 that occurred on October 20th, 2021 at 1056 AM if you happen to be on the Eastern Seaboard of the United States. This is a video update for the Twin Soul Collective. Please check out Time Zone Converter for your local time. Before we dive in, I just want to say a very special thank you to everyone who participated in the Timing of Union workshop. If you would be so kind, there is a review form in your inbox. I'd love your feedback about the course so that I can make it better. Those who have not yet watched the prerequisite videos will have access after watching those videos. Um, and the recording is now yours for life. This workshop may be available at a future date. I'm not sure yet. It's going to kind of depend on what the feedback says. The November calendar is open for those of you who missed it um, and you want me to look at union stuff for you, union energies for you for the next year. Uh, we can have a look at that together. And for those of you who found the workshop content as an intermediate beginner workshop was just too, mu too much to follow through with or follow as a beginner or a novice, you might find a one hour twin reading is useful for you. Okay. Uh, the workshop was launched to those on my private list first. Uh, so if you found that you missed it, you found out about it late or it closed before you even saw it was open, the best thing to do, I had a lot of people email me after the registration window closed to say, hey, can I still get the workshop? The answer is no. So if you'd like to be the first to know about it, the best thing to do is to get on the private list. Link is below this video. You'll be able to access, uh, have first access to workshops and information and special events, etc. Let's get into the Aries full moon energy. I've been saying this kind of all summer, but I winter if you happen to be in the southern hemisphere of the globe. <laughs> if you haven't noticed, there's been a strong relationship theme to many of the lunations, and that has to do with the placement of Sagittarius placed Juno, our partnership asteroid, um, and some of the connections she has made throughout Leo season, now Libra season, Virgo season, to the planetary energies that have passed through those signs. So we are at one more lunation that is very deeply relationship focused. I went through it with a heavy hand and detail in the Lightworker Energy Update, my strong recommendation for those of you who are really committed to having shifts in the world of your connection would be to have a look at that because I always detail the work in that video. Inside of this video, I kind of gloss over some general changes you might be seeing inside of your connection if you just need validation. But as you know, these connections don't really anchor in the third dimension without doing the work. So they're meant to work in tandem. I invite you to have a look at the Lightworker Energy Update for more detail about what the work is at this time. We do have this full moon speaking in harmony, sorry, not harmony, an aspect of a square to Pluto and the sun. And because of some of the other aspects here, air is talking to moon, Mars talking to sun, there is an energy here of supreme tension in relationships. And I, I, I went into the specifics of why in the Lightworker Energy Update video, but I just will shorthand you here, give you the cliff notes. Uh, there's an ending here in uh, the way things are moving in connections for divine counterparts. Both Juno and Jupiter are having conversations with the moon and the sun at this lunation, which brings the ending energy even more into divine counterpartships. And I'm going to talk about multiple ways that this can impact what's going on in your connection because there's multiple different paths that have opened up 
depending upon just where you're at in your growth, what you're here to do on planet Earth, etc. So we'll talk about all of that in a moment. But for those of you who've been with me for a while, you've heard me say this, I'm going to repeat it now, that when there is a T-square in the astrological energy, the way to relieve the tension of it is to anchor ourselves in the energy that is conspicuous in omission, and that's cancer. This is all about owning our emotions, being in emotional integrity, meaning aligning what we're doing with what it is we are feeling, not acting against ourselves, but allowing where our heart is at to really guide what we're experiencing in the third dimension and what we're choosing in the third dimension. All of that to say, this particular full moon would have highlighted where there have been misalignments in the way we're behaving and choosing in our connections, our habituated patterns, and our the ways in which we're interacting with one another, this full moon would have really highlighted for us, okay, here is what has to change. I can no longer act this way, behave this way, make these choices, operate in this pattern in my connection or with the people that I'm affiliated with outside of my divine connection. So if there's a soulmate in the picture, that as well. Um, and this would have been hard. I'm not going to lie. This Plutonian influence has been with us since the early parts of the summer at each, you know, passing lunation. You may want to go back and re-listen to those videos if you're new to the channel to plot the timeline of your connection over the course of the summer so you can really see what the proverbial tap on the shoulder was. And from the tap on the shoulder, what the knock on the door was. And from the knock on the door, what is now here with a two by four for a whack over the head. This patterning has the ending to our unhealthy patternings in the world of relationship are about forcing us to get into a place where we are self-considering, where we are centered in ourselves, not necessarily self-centered, but centered in our own truths and being really clear about what it is we need to do in order to be at our best for the people in our lives that we love. During this full moon, a lot of control patterns would have gotten exposed control and manipulation patterns. So again, I kind of talk about some of that in the Lightworker Energy Update video, like why that would be. There's a couple that are really kind of specific to twin experiences that I've seen that I'll reference here in a moment. Um, these control patterns are being exposed so that we personally can see what is the thing that we do to avoid our emotions. What is the behavior that we do? Do we drink? Do we Netflix? Do we binge eat? Do we binge work? Do we bury ourselves in sex? Do we, you know, do a whole bunch of drugs? Do we just cut people off where we are feeling out of our depth emotionally with them? We just cut them off and cut and run. Um, the question that this full moon is asking us is what do we do when we're trying to avoid our emotions? And this full moon would have really exposed it. Our control pattern around our emotions would have really like hit us in the face like, wow, this is what I'm doing because this is what I'd rather not feel. So, and this is, this is, this is a good thing that these control patterns would have come up for us to witness, for us to see. This is actually a very helpful thing for us to understand at this time, because what it's doing is it's giving us an opportunity to change. We can't change what we can't see. And so because these things are now coming forward for visibility in our conscious mind, we have the opportunity to align our lives better. We have the opportunity to create things that work better for who we really are. Change isn't easy, but it's a necessary part of life. And so this particular lunation gives us that opportunity to be accountable for our experiences in relationship and to change. 
one of the things that it'll be important to pay attention to with this energy are just the ways that you're witnessing other people in your world respond to their own emotionality. Because what we're going to see with this tension energy that's in the sky from this T-square and some of the other aspects that I talk about in the Lightworker Energy Update, what we're going to see are what people do and what we ourselves do when we are in a place of feeling like our back is against the wall, when we are forced to change, but we may or may not be ready to. Some people freeze. Some people, you know, kind of go into a chaos pattern and, you know, they kind of, you know, do more than they have to to create chaos and inevitable failure. Some people end up, um, you know, hiding. Some people blame. They try to get all the other people around them to change so that they don't have to. It's a resistance pattern. Um, some people self justify, you know, so that they don't have to change. You're going to see all sorts of things at this lunation from the people around you and from within yourself with regard to change. The opportunity here is to step into sovereignty and accountability with our emotional truths so that we can be able to make the necessary changes. These changes are definitively, there's no other way to put it, they're coming with an ending. That's here. There is something that is over and done with at this lunation and specifically for the divine counterparts because of the way that both Juno and Jupiter are speaking to the sun and the moon. So we've got sun in sextile to Juno. We've got moon in sextile to Jupiter. Then we have Jupiter in trine to the sun, and we have Juno in trine to the moon. And so because there's this influence from the divine counterparts, and these divine counterparts are open to influence from the sun and the moon, and both the sun and the moon are getting a heavy hit over here from Pluto, which is the ruler of endings. There is this... There is a chapter, there is a cycle in divine counterpartships that is coming to completion, coming to a close. So I'm going to talk about now a few of the different ways that that may be playing out in different connections. Now, normally, if you've been with me for a while, you'll see me kind of do divine feminine separate and like its own section and talk about what's going on for divine feminine energy templates and divine masculine energy templates. But because they are flowing so much in harmony with one another, they are sextile to each other in this energy. Because they are flowing in harmony with one another, instead, I'm going to talk about this as general energies that counterpart pairs may really be seeing in their connection across the spectrum. I've heard it all in my readings over the last 10 days um, coming into this lunation. So I'm going to share some things just so that you can understand how this might impact you. This does not mean if what you're hearing isn't what's going on for you. This doesn't mean it it's your story or, you know, it's what's going on for you. Listen for what validates your own intuition about your connection. Don't try to force things to fit. Okay, so um, let's just see, where do I start here? Right, so done with one way of being in connection, moving into a new way of being in connection. There's an interesting thing going on here for both counterparts uh, where we have Juno sitting real close to Venus. We have Mars in trine to Jupiter. And what this means is that there's an integration energy. There's one way to interpret it. There's another way, and I'm going to give you that. But the first way to interpret this is that there's an integration energy of our own internal uh, human masculine and feminine energy with our divine 
masculine and feminine energy, there's this way in which the barrier is becoming quite thin between our humanity and our divinity. And there's an integration now of the two where, you know, it might've been, you know, all light and love up until recently. And now a lot of the human emotionality of the experience in what the divine counterpart connection brings to the table is coming forward. There could have been, uh, you know, a lot of human experiences in the world of, well, we'll just get together and we'll just, you know, build a house and make some babies and do some 3D things only for that to give way at this time to grand insight and divine awareness and opening about, you know, this is so much more than just that. You're here to give more, you're here to get more than the stand, fitting into the standard human and normative templates of coupleship and partnership on planet earth. So the integration between the human and the divine uh, in our masculine and femininity is up at this time. The opportunity here because of this ending energy um, is to allow that integration to happen. I'm going to be honest, it's probably uncomfortable <laughs> for most people. Um, you know, this may not be your first rodeo at it, maybe your second or third with this kind of co like collapsing of the two energies. And that doesn't mean it's not challenging. It doesn't come with its own challenges to your consciousness and to your psychological machinations there. So that integration is one way this energy can be interpreted. Another way that this can be interpreted um, as well, for those of you who may be having this experience because of the way Juno is also having a conversation with Mars and Jupiter is also having a conversation with Venus. Notice how these arrows went in the clockwise direction. This is going backwards. There is a real potential for both counterparts at this time to be having conversations, connections with soulmates from the past. At this moment in time, Venus and Mars do represent the soulmate energies in the way that I read. Um, Juno and Jupiter, the divine counterpart energies. And so there's this opening for connection with people who are not your divine counterpart at this time. Those other people may be coming into your world. This Plutonian energy here and the Saturnian energy here are really bringing forward a bit of a choice point in for people who have been dealing with um, other entities in their connection. This choice point energy at this Aries full moon uh, is about what are you going to do? Are you going to, you know, bring this into a happy thruple? I mean, some people do that, you know, or into a happy quad. Um, where, you know, the soulmates and the divine counterparts all get together, move into a house and raise kids together? Are you going to stay in the connection that has, you know, if your connection with the soulmate is past its expiration date, and now it's just rotting um, in your life? Are you going to stay in the rot? Are you going to complete it? If, you know, you'd like to move forward with your counterpart, but they're not quite available, are you going to allow yourself to be open to something new with someone new or a soulmate from the past who may have matured into a different vibration? There's a lot of choice energy here. The one thing that's definitive is because of all the cardinal energy at this lunation and the Plutonian square to the moon and the sun nothing is staying the same. It is definitely changing. But what we do with the energy and the invitation to change, it's up to us. Some people take their invitations and they shred them and they throw them in the garbage. Other people deify them. Other people just show up to the party. Like what you choose to do with your invitation is going to be up to you. 
So there's a bit of that energy there. Um, what this tells me with Jupiter and Juno in harmony to one another in the same way that they were at the beginning of the year, um, that there is a bit of a union window that has reopened. And I talked about this at the last lunation, the flowing back in harmony with one another in that sextile format. But the harmony doesn't manifest in the third dimension without their work, their participation. Um, making that phone call, uh, going to that event, doing that forgiveness work, um, you know, putting down that pride, those kinds of things. There is a bit of work required to get the harmony out of this configuration before they move into the pre-union window of 2022 that peaks in 2023. So, you know, again, energy is energy. You get to do what you want with it. But um, yeah, there's definitely a lot of harmonious flow here between the counterparts, but there is also other energies here. There's other people here in their world in intimate, intimate ways. So um, if that's playing out for you in this way, it may not be. You may have the other way that this is playing out. Um, and so I want to kind of talk a little bit about some of the individual influences that I'm seeing between the two. Uh, the final thing that I'm seeing here that I want to say is that the divine feminine energy is when she connects with Venus, she does become, I mean, she's already a magnetic energy. Our divine feminine energy is just, it's such a bright light. Um, once it's been really initiated with love, with Venus, because Venus is the attraction point, it's the magnetism point in any chart, and with Venus coming to sit with her, uh, it does make her even more magnetic. With Jupiter having a conversation with Mars, this imbues divine masculine energy with even more, like kind of that primal masculine power, um, and that primal masculine charge. And so, you know, Divine counterparts do note the people in your world are going to be responsive to this. Um, you will not be able to walk into a room unignored at this time because your energy is just quite amplified at this time. Use, but as the saying goes, I think it's from, I can't remember, one of the superhero movies, one of the comic books with great power comes great responsibility. So use it wisely. Okay. Um, now let's talk a little bit more about their individual influences because Jupiter all summer has had, all year really, has had some real funkiness going on with Ceres and Lilith. Um, and specifically with Ceres, there's some, been some funkiness with the mother figure all year. Um, could be your mom, could be your baby's mama, could be, you know, someone you're a step parent to as a stepdad. It could be, you know, um, some other sort of figure who represents mom in your world. There's been some real funkiness and it, it does come to a bit of a crescendo at this full moon. And then Juno here, she's been on her own fantastic voyage with Chiron and Mercury, sorry, Chiron and Neptune. And now that she's done with Chiron, she started with Neptune at the start of the year. Now she's done. She moved into talking to Chiron. That was other than festive this summer. Um, and now she's back talking to Neptune again. And that's been creating some challenges as well. So let's break each of these down so that you can understand the different ways that this can be interpreted for your own life. Um, in the world, let's deal with Juno first. Ladies first. Juno had is coming out of an extended period of time in conversation with Chiron. This conversation, the trine, would have really illuminated for divine feminine energies where our divine femininity has sustained wounds in the journey from human feminine to divine feminine and what those wounds require in order to 
facilitate healing. For many, there could have been, um, for those of you who've been on the journey for a long time, you know, just encounters with your own resistance and resentment about what you've had to experience through the journey. And that's also true because of Eris, who is still in the mix with her now. Um, Eris does represent where we feel left out or we've gotten the short end of the stick. So Eris's influence on her, her conversation with Chiron, there could just be a little bit of, in the shadow, self-victimization as a result of the connection. Poor me, why did I have to go through this? Wah, wah. And simultaneously, a real recognition, this has not been easy. I have had to go through a lot. I have changed a lot. I have grown a lot. And it's cost me a lot, but what it's cost me, I have also, I have also transcended, transmuted through. There's a bit of a breather again now on this side of that communication with Chiron as she's speaking with Neptune for the second time this year. But that Neptunian energy can create a lot of fog for divine feminines. Not only fog but it can create confusion, even a numbness or a tuned outness to the connective tissue, connective energy, the glue in the connection. It can create a bit of a emotional distance, if you will, um, or distance from the, you know, what Juno brings, which is commitment. Um, now, for others, this whole configuration has been a part of uh, the deconditioning process for you, where you are in the process of letting go of the, the mortal earthly realm ideas about love, connection, and commitment, and awakening to truth about love, connection, and commitment. There could also final way this could play out, um, and by the way, that last thing I glanced over it, but it's hard as hell. So for those of you who are going through that, my heart's with you. This Juno thing uh, with Neptune, though, can also create some obfuscation and lies, point blank. It can create a bit of deception for some divine feminine energies. And it could, also, it could be not just a lie to counterpart or to soulmate, but it could most Lies that we tell other people are 100% based on lies that we're telling ourselves. Ways we are self-deceiving about what our circumstance is, what our heart feels with this, again, Pluto T-square to Sun Moon. This particular lunation is really demanding of both divine feminine and masculine to get into the heart space and acknowledge and own what's there. And the Neptunian energy is not making that easy on the divine feminine energetic templates. However, this can be transmuted and used in a very spiritual way if you're willing to look more deeply at the emotional sphere. What do I feel? Why do I feel the way I feel? And how can I adjust my thinking so that I'm in a place of feeling more high vibrational? So that's the invitation there. Uh, for divine feminine energies. Um, and I want to take a moment to just address something that I spoke about inside the channeled messages for 2020 before, sorry, 2021, before the year began or as the year began. This is also in the divine feminine energetic template where some of you um, have had the experience of a counterpart who is not available, not ready, and it has been years that there's been no effort, no communication, no connection in the third dimension. For those of you who are in that experience, and I'm not talking about purification process people, I'm talking about people who are well and truly done with that and who are moved into a place of time where the energy has been a waiting energy, and it's very different than purification process energy. It's an energy of, like, there's no more meat on the learning bone when it comes to being in the connection at this time. Many of you with this final Neptunian pass will be now, are getting prepared vibrationally 
to be in connection with someone else for a new connection, a new union energy, a new person to come in so that you can still be of service to love, to the divine here on earth and have the fulfillment that you so want and so desire and have invested in through your growth in the connection. If that is you, one of the experiences you may be experiencing through this Neptune connection will be a bit of a numbness. It'll be a bit of like a tuned out, checked out kind of thing with your connection. I would be shocked if you're even watching this video because your life is just in such a different place. All of that to say, um, as a divine counterpart, that doesn't go away just because your person has checked out of the connection, has an, a, you know things they need to do elsewhere, lessons they need to learn elsewhere, leadership they need to provide elsewhere. Your divinity activation doesn't dissipate. You will still get pulled into leadership, into service, into love, in connections where the, there is a vibrational match. And so this particular transit is one of the transits that is setting you up for that. And if there is a numbness, a checked outness at this time, the only thing there is to do about that is to not lament, but to actually allow. Just allow it to be what it's going to be. Don't worry about what's going on with the connection. Trust that the connection it's in the high, I love this, Ella says this quite a lot. She says, you know, if it's uh, her phrasing as she was thinking about her counterpart and they were coming toward union, she was like, if it's in the highest good of all involved for us to be together, we will. And that was the intention she set. And she continued to live her life. And so this is, I, I offer that to you as a way to anchor your mind while the energy transforms your field. All right. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Good. So that's that. Um, allowing surrender. That's all there is to do with that. Um, and for some of you, that soulmate person may already be in the mix. So as I said earlier, but like I said, there's multiple ways this energy can play out. So don't try to force something to be true for you if it just ain't. And if you're triggered, stop watching these videos. <laughs> Tune into your own intuition. Don't try to outsource your intuition to me or another reader. Tune in and then tune me out so that you can be in the place of hearing for your own connection, for your own wisdom, okay? All right, let's move on. Let's have a conversation a bit about this Jupiter thing that's going on with Ceres. So this has been an ongoing issue this year, and this it's finally coming to a wrap and a completion point um, where there has been, because of the way Ceres has been in conversation with Lilith, because of the way Ceres has been in conversation with Chiron all year, there has been a little bit of, I mean, I don't even think it's been a little bit. Um, and because of the way the Mercury retrogrades have worked on top of Ceres and then now here inside of Libra and then over here in Aquarius, it's been Mercury retrogrades have been in uh, air signs all year. There has been a bit of compromised communication. I would say between divine masculine energies and mother energies. So like I said, this could be your own mom. It could be a baby mama. It could be, um, you know, some other kind of mother figure. Maybe you have been a stepdad to a child. But when I say compromised communication, what I'm actually seeing, um, to put it bluntly, is just manipulation straight out you know, trying to strong arm divine masculine energies into doing what she wants, behaving the way she wants him to behave, executing on her desired plans. And what I'm seeing at this time, as we're closing out the cycle at the Aries full moon and Jupiter is no longer 
with an orb to be in conversation with her, um, that the exactness of the conversation is done. I'm seeing what this is looking like to me is divine masculine energy moving forward and Ceres Lilith Chiron still in conversation with uh, together and Mercury having retrograded back and forth speaking to her this is putting it all together to me it really looks quite a like a lot like um clinging it looks like a clinging on kind of energy if i'm being really honest um and then there's this palace energy here that's also squaring her and within this there's an opportunity of recognition that there could be by the clinging there's actually an undermining of that which she's wanting to protect. Um, there's a bit of like a, there's an opportunity here at this lunation for recognition of individual sovereignty by confronting emotional truths and personal wounds that have caused the manipulation patterning to exist in the first place. Now, whether or not said mother figure is actually doing that, I don't know. Um, however, uh, either way, it looks like divine masculine energy is just pulling forward, which is great. I mean, one of the major lessons this year for divine masculine energy through the retrograde, I'm so sorry, I never got to the retrograde video for Jupiter, but one of the major lessons was learning how to not fall on your sword for other people. And instead of asking yourself what you would die for and making your giving an act of self-annihilation the lesson was really about asking yourself what are you willing to live for what are you willing to change for and allow your giving to come from a place of self-inclusion um, of knowing that you can only give when your cup is full and knowing that you can only provide and protect when you yourself are not vulnerable and exposed. So um, the Eris energy that's been influencing divine masculine energy fields pretty much, you know, all summer and spring has really brought to the surface for the divine masculine energy fields. Like, hey, where am I feeling like uh, I'm just getting the short end of the stick? with people because this is really not okay. It's not okay for me to continue to get the short end of the stick, to continue to be last, to continue to um, you know, give everything away and keep nothing for myself. Like I'm literally killing myself doing this. And so there's been an invitation on the table as these very uncomfortable feelings have come up in the divine masculine energy fields. And it doesn't matter what body you incarnated into. We all have masculine and feminine energy. Um, there's been this invitation on the table to cut it out, like stop. <laughs> as the discomfort has come up, it's come up with purpose. And its purpose was to get us to stop participating in our own self annihilation so that because we've outgrown that. Okay, so there is that. Um, and then for some, because of the way Juno here is also in conversation with Eris this year, um, especially at this time, this there's a mutual unwillingness or recognition, I should say, on the part of both counterparts, mutual recognition can't put self last anymore, must eat at the table with everyone else, can't be excluded, can't self annihilate anymore to make other people happy. So that's the energy and the frequency and the vibration there. Um, if you've already heard something that resonates, there's way more here and I'm going to get into it. I'm sorry this video is so long. There's just a lot happening. Um, and it took me a minute to really get it all in my brain um, as I was witnessing the unfoldments in the third dimension. I was like, what is this in the chart? Oh, it's that. But if you're hearing something that resonates and you know you need a reading to 
unpack this stuff for yourself. Now's the time to book it. November is filling up, but there are still spots available. Um, and I'd love to chat with you about your twin connection to help you understand how to use the energies masterfully. kmoonastro.com, link is below. Okay, so that piece with Eris has been super critical. It's created some resentment, but the resentment has served a purpose. Now, one of the things I really love about this as I'm looking at it is the way that with Juno and Jupiter in harmony to one another and both speaking in harmony to Eris, in the light, this energy has a way of bringing both counterparts, like raising up to the level of consciousness for both counterparts. I can no longer exclude my connection from my life. I can no longer live a life where the connection is off to the side or I'm pretending like it's not important or one of the most important things to me. It's bringing to the surface a like level of not willing to uh, kill the connection or self-annihilate or sacrifice the connection or exclude the connection from the most important parts of life. And this Pluto full moon is bringing that Pluto full moon, Pluto square, the full moon in Aries, this Aries full moon is really bringing that to the forefront for both counterparts in the consciousness, which is really lovely to see if, you know, if that's playing out as true for you. That's one of the ways this energy can operate in shadow. It could really be both counterparts just nitpicking each other to death. Well, you did. Well, then you did. And sabotage and blame cycles unfolding in the shadow. But in the light, there's this opportunity to bring things closer together by recognizing that our resentments are showing us the reality of where we have allowed ourselves to be excluded. Okay. So, um, okay. Yes. I just Uranus Vesta thing going on. There is some divine intervention here, definitely changes to uh, and disruption to our commitments as we know them. I know a lot of people have, you know, people have told me, yeah, I'm getting divorced or I'm ending a relationship during this lunation. So this could potentially be a way that this energy is playing out to you. Um, and then let's just see. What else we have here? We talked about the Eris pieces. We talked about Divine Feminine speaking to Neptune. Okay. The only other thing that it seemed relevant to mention, especially for the divine feminine energies, is to pay attention to your dreams with Juno speaking to Neptune. Um, there are some things that are going to go on in the dream space for you. For those of you who are avid dreamers, not all of you are, but for those of you who consistently get messages from your dreams, Start paying attention to what they're revealing to you, sharing with you, telling you, because there's bits of information in there that are really critical for you to understand about what's happening in your world now and what is going to be happening next. Um, I wouldn't take everything you dream as literal. I'm certainly not a dream interpreter, so please don't come to a reading for astrology and expect me to interpret your dreams. I can't do that. I'm not good at that. I don't have the psychology background for that. However, um, I can see here with this connection and the planetary energy that dreams are going to start to become incredibly important. Sleep state's going to be important if you're tired right now. Um, rest. This energy is going to bring forward a real need to rest and reset. And you're going to notice that no matter what emotional state you've been in, sleep with this Neptune energy here is actually going to be, it's going to reset you and heal you in ways at this time that it, you may not have access to in your wakeful states. So it'll be important to give yourselves that really 
really good rest um, if you need it, if you're recognizing you're just more tired than normal at this time. And then finally, um, you know, I had a woman email me recently um, to say, it's so crazy. You mentioned this union window. My counterpart and I actually went to the um, to the courthouse. We got our marriage certificate. We are getting married. And so there are those of you, I want to speak to that now. There are those of you who during, you know, this 2021 pre-union window kind of energy, you have come into the third dimensional kind of traditional, we want to get married or we want to be together or we want to live together or we want to co-parent together kind of energy. Um, so, you know, it's beautiful when that can happen. And that happens both as a matter of free will and when it's in alignment, the alignment for the good of all involved, all you're connected to. So if that, if you're seeing that start to present in your material world, awesome and um, because there's so much turbulence at this full moon there's like a restless energy um, again whether that's you or not this is the time for really anchoring into our emotional truths um, what is true in my heart space what's happening with my emotional reality and what do i need to do in order to facilitate this um, these emotional truths unfolding in my third dimension in a, in a way that honors me, honors the connection. Um, I also read for a couple this week who, you know, had come together and they're really wanting to work together in some way. When I looked at the charts, it was just really evident. You know, she was in a place where she was prepared and ready to work. He was in a place where he was still closing out a lot of cycles um, and a lot of endings and a lot of transformation and change. You know, in our conversation, it became really necessary to anchor the wisdom that she was going to have to run in front for a while and on her own so that she would be able to call forward the thought leadership, call forward um, you know, build the container, build the womb, if you will, for what will get birth through the two of them when her counterpart is ready for that. And so, um, you know, if you're coming into union and you're having this kind of like, well, what are we supposed to do? Or what am I doing? And there's a restlessness about it. It's also a perfect time to get a reading so we can look and see how does it all fit together for you. Um, kmoonastro.com link is below the video book your twin readings there I'm so grateful we had the opportunity to chat about this lunation thank you for your patience I know a lot of you prefer these to come out in advance of the lunation I can't always provide that sorry there's a lot of great astrologers on YouTube I'm sure you'll find what you need but you'll also need to tune into your own wisdom to take a look what's happening What's happening in the energy? What are the patterns you're seeing? Your discernment will also guide you. Okay. Thanks again and bye for now.